Shit, moving on, I got to make sure I talk about this, though. Because uh, especially lately, you got to talk about that song, the Tupac song. Uh, Tupac Must Die. Tupac Must Die. Came out uh, like about four or five years ago? Four years? Four years ago, 2019. Yeah. And basically in that song, you kind of like entail the unwritten details of what happened the night Tupac died. I, I like to uh, think of it as me telling the street side of the story. Yeah, for sure. What uh what inspired you to do that? Hip hop is all about telling the streets side of the story. Yeah. So you just felt like that story needed to be told at that time. It wasn't about timing as much as it was about the idea came to me at the time. Um and it was right when I, I really finally got a grasp on hip hop. I got a grasp on marketing, right? I started understanding that the world has to care about the topic for you, for them to care about perspective. Um, it just was time and it was time. It wasn't like I had the idea like eight years before it and just held it. Uh, it just came to me at that time. And as I realized hip hop was telling the streets side of the story, I always thought like as a crip, like I knew the world knew I was a crip. Um, the world knew I was a crip. So, they would respect me telling a crip story and what's the biggest the biggest things that involve crips that people don't know their perspective you know what i'm saying and that's one of the biggest things uh the death of tupac shakur um the start of the 92 93 los angeles riots um there's only so many things that involve a crip that the world know about I mean, I got a couple of other ideas that, that have came to me since then, but I'm, I'm thinking about making them a rap. Mm. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Um, and, of course, the song is from the perspective of the person who allegedly killed. Yeah, he was, he's a Southside Compton crew. Yeah. For sure. Man, what do you know, you know, coming from Compton and Watts, what do you know about the Southside Compton Crips? Good like, dudes, man. Historic. Good shit. brothers, man. They always had money growing yeah. up. They wasn't no poor niggas. Yeah, for sure. That kind of set them apart as far as being a set, just having that money and shit. Yeah, because it means they didn't have to be friendly with everybody. They probably had a lot more, you know, issues with other Crips a lot sooner than other Crips did. Yeah. You know, um, at least I would imagine. But they was always known to have money. They wasn't poor. They wasn't like uh, other gangs. They had some motherfucking money. For sure. Uh -huh. Man, they was like really them dudes. Like, you know, they was having money. They was connected with industry dudes. Do you ever think like what happened with them and Tupac kind of left a blemish on uh, LA's like music scene a little bit? Hell no. No. Nah. Helped it? Know. Well, it just makes it. It just brings a validity to the conversations. You know, it, it, it creates a standard of like nobody's above the program, not even one of the most beloved hip hop artists historically. No man is above the program in Los Angeles, not even within the culture itself. No man's above the program. You got to really treat everybody with a level of respect here. You got to know where you at. You can't just be flossing on people. You know what I mean? You can't be wearing these big chains. You know what I mean? It's shit will go bad. You know what I mean? You can't just mistreat anybody. This is really the wild, wild west because it'll go bad fast. Yeah, for sure. Historically, LA has yeah, had that reputation. It's going to live up to its reputation almost every time. Yeah, for sure. It's just one of them things. It is what it is. Yeah, and it's, it's sad because obviously, you know, Tupac is one of the guys that everybody loved. We all loved as far as the black folks, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, um, you know, a bad situation happened. And, and the same thing that happens to my friends happened to one of the world's greatest hip hop artists. Yeah. You know what I mean? If, you, if, if respect is not carried out and you, you know, you mistreat somebody and you don't deal with their reputation and, and who they are correctly, it could go bad. And I mean, I think he knew what was going on. There's this belief that he didn't know. And I don't believe that's true. You say Tupac didn't know? Yeah, there's a belief that Tupac just didn't know. He got involved with something he didn't understand. I don't think that's really what it was. I think he was committed to his friends the way we be committed to our friends. Yeah. And that's kind of what happens sometimes. And basically, he kind of got out of line. I don't think got out of line. He did what he thought he had to do. Right. So if somebody took my homeboy chain, I might rest their stupid ass too. You know what I mean? Like. But again, it's one of them things where, you know, it come, it don't stop sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just rough. Um, yes. Yeah, so when you made that song, you kind of felt like 
that's the streets of LA already always kind of knew what happened. And it was yeah. just like kind of like a, I guess a, you know, like a, a out sigh party. of relief kind of. You like know? a coming out party. Yeah. Like it, it definitely created a, a sense of relief to people within the culture. You know what I mean? It definitely gave them, uh, uh, it made them more comfortable. Like, damn, I'm glad somebody told this person's story. And, you know, people were saying this person was broke and he was just some kind of villain or heathen. Man, this nigga wasn't a horrible person. He was just a, a really a, a young dude surviving. He's two years younger than Tupac. Yeah. You know what I mean? Surviving these crazy streets and trying to keep his reputation sound so he can earn and you know, have value for itself like anybody else from any other ghetto. It's just, you know, we take our reputation really serious around here and it could get bad. It did. Real shit. Speaking on reputation and you was talking about how California, L.A. has a certain reputation, uh, even going back to then. But when you look at like PNB Rock or people, I've even seen when Deion Sanders team got robbed at UCLA. Sure. Like people say that that about L.A. like. Yeah, it's like that. Why do you think it is? Do you feel like, because people say like, oh yeah, especially in the rap game, careful when you go out there, they be looking for it type of shit. Is it like that? Yeah, nobody bigger than a program. Mm -hmm. No man's bigger than a program. You come out here big wigging and shit, it could go bad. You, know, you just got to kind of keep your shit together. Remember, you a regular person around this motherfucker. I don't give a fuck who you is. You be the biggest gang member in the world, not just... Rapper, you could be the biggest gang member in the world in Los Angeles and you end up in somebody's community and some regular nigga blow your fucking head off. That's from over there. You know what I mean? Um, this is the wild, wild west and no man is bigger than a program. Not nobody. And if you know that, you'll be fine in Los Angeles. That'll be the reason why you don't go to some poor community wearing entirely too much jewelry because you understand that motherfuckers will take you down a pig. Plus they poor. Real shit. Real shit, man. I got to talk about this new music. That song definitely we talked about was a classic, but I got to talk about this this new shit we yeah, got right Cancel here. these nuts. Cancel these nuts. Now, grab it.